Gotta stretch out before you play magic. So, uh, just gonna wait for a couple of you guys to get in here with me. Um, just take a look at the deck. Uh, this is the, uh, the blue white build. Um, People have been all over the place lately. Uh, mono blue, blue white, blue green, even bant. A um, lot of options with Merfolk these days. So, uh, <laughs> blue white. Uh, this is the list, uh, the exact list that the Dogfish uh, has been having a, a lot of results with lately. I think he. Uh, put up two five O's in the last couple weeks with with this particular list. Uh, another pilot named Miss Trigger took the same list and and just straight up won a modern challenge with it. So uh, it's got a bit of a pedigree at this point. Uh, it's it's sort of proven itself. Uh, while I wait for a few of you guys to uh, a few more of you guys and gals to join me uh, on the stream this evening, I, I'm just going to talk about some of the. Uh, more prominent sort of salient points of the uh, of this particular build. Uh, let's see. So as a blue white deck, you can see uh, the white is is really quite minimal. It's it's really all about the unsettled mariner. Um, but once you start running a playset of even one off off color card, uh, you really need to work to uh, you know support it in the mana base. And so to be able to, well, you know, we also have Lurus, so let's not forget about that. So we've got uh, the playset of Unsettled Mariner, and we've got Lurus in the sideboard. Uh, to support those two cards, uh, we've got the four Wanderwine hubs, which in this deck are maybe like 90 plus percent of the time just going to be Tundra. Uh, it's just the it's just a blue-white, painless dual land. Uh, you just have to reveal a Merfolk, which you're usually just going to cast right away anyway. It does have its its drawbacks. There are there are fringe situations where you really need to draw land and you're empty handed, uh, but you draw this and so you don't have a merfolk to reveal. But again, ninety plus percent of the time, it's just going to be really busted in this deck. So uh, makes sense to be up on on four of them. Uh, then you've got you know once you start to run Bant, you you really need things like fetch lands, shock lands. Uh, Wander Wine Hub is not uh, fetchable, and so. Uh, slots into this blue-white deck really nicely. We've obviously got a lot of Merfolk to make sure it comes in untapped, and we don't need any other colors other than blue and white. Uh, sort of filling out the, the rest of the requirements to be able to play Unsettled Mariner and Lurus with, with, with some you know consistency. We've got the three Sea Chrome Coasts. Uh, comes into play tapped past turn three, uh, past our third land drop, I should say, but um, we really want our mana in the early turns, you know, so uh, it's 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 a good choice for Merfolk. Two Cavern of Souls uh, makes blue, makes white. Um, this is a deck, uh, this particular build that doesn't have a lot of non-creature mana requirements. Uh, Dismember is is colorless in its requirements, so you can cast it off Cavern. The only thing that Cavern can potentially make a little bit awkward is if you need to cast Spreading Seas and it's your only uh, colored source of mana, can't really contribute to Spreading Seas, and obviously can't contribute to Force. So uh, so yeah, three Muta Vaults. Uh, not running the full playset because uh, it is a two-color deck, and running four uh, gray lands on, on top of the two Cavern of Souls can get a little bit clunky. We do want to be able to cast Lurus uh, some percentage of the time, and just, just jamming the deck full of gray lands uh, makes that very difficult. There have been games when I've ca when I've called, uh, or rather named, Nightmare with Cavern of Souls uh, <laughs> to be able to c contribute uh, white mana for Lurus. Uh, it, it, situations where I've got like five blue sources already, and I, I don't really have enough white, and so Cavern can help in a pinch uh, to cast Lurus. Um, a number of pilots, I'm sure this is, this is something that's been happening since Merfolk has existed in Modern, um, but hedging on the number of spreading seas in the main deck, uh, three, three seas uh, in the main, one in the side, there's a fair amount of blue in the format right now between all of the, uh, the control decks, all of the sort of Bant Uro decks, uh, then you even have like blue, blue red prowess, uh, they run steam vents, so... Um, it's an, it's an amazing card, obviously. Uh, we have three in the main deck. Uh, we really want to turn Island Walk on, attack uh, Unblockable. 
but there are just going to be matchups where it's not the best card. So totally makes sense to uh, to hedge, put one of those spreading seas in the sideboard. Uh, since we're running Lurus, uh, this this deck can't really afford to run Brazen Borrower. It is a uh, three CMC permanent, and uh, Lurus's companion text says that each permanent card has to be uh, two or less. Uh, so Brazen Borrower uh, doesn't really work. You can have it in the sideboard, right? Because Lurus says um, in your starting deck. So you, you could have a Brazen Borrower in the sideboard, but if you bring it in, it means that you can't cast Lurus from the companion zone. And so very much a non-bow. So you want to be careful with that, obviously, when you're when you're running Lurus. Uh, so instead of instead of uh, Brazen Borrower, we've got Echoing Truth. I actually personally kind of prefer Echoing Truth. It's got it's got pretty high upside. Spirits has been getting kind of popular. You bounce a whole bunch of tokens. Um, but you know, even just like bouncing the biggest threat, like uh, a Death Shadow, getting a Planeswalker off the board for for a turn or something. Um, and obviously, Ensnaring Bridge, uh, troublesome things like that. Um, Echoing Truth, great card to have if they've got. Two ensnaring bridges down. Uh, Echoing Truth is is your go-to. Um, Monoleak, extra counter spells. Uh, you can see we're hedging on Force of Negation a little bit as well. You've got uh, the three in the main, one in the side. Again, not every matchup is is amazing for Force, so you can see the rationale behind just sort of splitting them up. It is nice to have access to the playset in the seventy-five because it is one of the more powerful cards in the format, um, particularly with all these blue cards that we have uh, to pitch for it. Tidebinder Mage, um, three, almost an entire playset in the in the uh, in the sideboard. It's going to help against all these red matchups. Definitely a meta call and a very strong one at that. Uh, and then down here we've got uh, a couple artifacts. Uh, Chalice wins games. Uh, it's it's a pretty good card. There's a lot of Death Shadow running around. Um, some people don't think Chalice is is super good against Death Shadow. Uh, possibly because maybe you know, it's a bit of a nonbo with Relic. I'm not exactly sure what the rationale is. Maybe it's because they have Assassin's Trophy or Kolagon's Command. But something like 80% of their deck is made out of one-drops, right? So uh, I'm bringing in Relic and I'm bringing in Chalice against against Death Shadow. And Chalice, I would have to say, like, uh, the archetype that I've won more games against with Chalice of the Void is has to be Death Shadow. It's just really, really strong against that that deck. Uh, so I think that pretty much sort of wraps up the little mini deck tech. Um, I see there's, there's a few of you guys in here with me now. Uh, welcome, uh, Broken Forever. Um, I, I recently got the ability in, in Twitch, uh, <laughs> since I guess I've been doing this for a while now, uh, I, I got a new ability to designate some of you guys in chat as VIPs. Now, I've only got one monitor. I can't really do, like, the split screen, uh, creator dashboard and, and while i'm streaming but after the stream i can always like add add roles and, and and call people vips but basically if i see you guys in chat a lot um if you guys are if you guys are giving me giving me feedback just generally interacting with me um and if you've been here for a long time i'm happy to uh to make you a vip i'm not exactly sure what sort of powers it bestows upon upon people but uh it's just nice. You get like a little diamond next to your name. Uh, Broken Forever, when I was looking through the list of people who are following me, uh, you're, I think you're one of my earliest followers. So it's good to see you here. And um, sorry you don't have a diamond next to your name yet. I'll try to remember to, uh, to send that diamond your way for the next stream. So without any further ado, uh, that, is, that is the 75. I'm going to jump into a league. Not 100% sure I'll be able to finish the league this evening. I'm a little bit tired, but currently um awake awake enough to see that i have the wrong deck here so let's go ahead and make sure that it's uh the correct deck all right so cool blue white merfolk we're gonna put uh pay with some play points and get things underway Sorry if the if the lighting looks a little bit weird on the stream this evening. I typically have like one of these ring lights off to the side just to provide more light this way. But I don't know. I've been doing something differently back here and I'm not so much not so sure how how important the ring light is at this point because honestly that's one of the things that makes me the most tired is just having a light here all night and it's just like it gets my eyes really tired. So Hopefully, hopefully the lighting situation looks reasonable and I don't have like crazy shadows under my eyes. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All 
right? Waiting for an opponent in stage one. M. Hayashi almost at 30, 30 trophies. Um, Freed Mania. Uh, I, I don't know what decks this guy plays. Um, like if he plays many, many decks, but I played against him and beat him. Um, I think with Merfolk recently. Could have been with Soul Herder. But this guy's uh, catching up to M. Hayashi. He's closing the gap a little bit, though it's still pretty comfortable. All right, it's like a eight out of twenty is um, like a four. It's like a forty percent lead or something like that. All right, cool. Thanks, Broken. Uh, glad to hear that. I, I think I looked at like a preview of what the webcam looked like, and it didn't seem terrible. So, you know, like people like Nasif can get away with uh, having pretty poor lighting just because they have eight hundred billion followers already and they don't need to, you know, have have beautiful lighting. <laughs> like Nasif just turned opens his laptop and just starts playing. Uh well this looks like a pretty capable Merfolk hand. Opponents starting with a Mulda six we are going to keep. So I'm currently at 191 followers I think and so close to that two hundred followers point. Like it would be such a such a nice milestone to hit. I have been keeping my my regular schedule of of Mondays and Wednesdays, Monday with Soul Herder, Wednesdays with with Merfolk. And uh I don't know, I think it's starting to pay off. I've, the followers have been uh sort of slowly getting added. So hopefully we draw something nice to replace the spreading seas. Uh, opponent in the tank during my upkeep. Island not exactly the best replacement. We do have plenty of white mana um to be able to cast uh, Lurus at some point and potentially recast that Spreading Seas. This looks like it could be Jund or um, any version of Death Shadow at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I just the consistency is really important, I think, for people who are following the channel. Opponent trying to just rip my hand apart, doing a pretty decent job, but that's why we have Lurus in the deck. Um, I mean, it, again, it could be Jund. Uh, it could be a, some. It could be like a black red um, eight rack deck for all we know. Hey, dogfish! Thanks for joining me. I'm playing some blue white this evening. You know that list that uh, Miss Trigger made really famous. <laughs> so it's Jund something. Could be Jund Shadow. Uh, but fast land probably makes me think just regular jund. <laughs> hey fruit kid. See I got some some merfolk folks with me this evening. Sometimes it's just like the the soul herder crew. It's always nice to have the merbros with me. Opponent going to thought seize me again. Let me have it. <laughs> Who's saying stuff? Oh my goodness. Look how shiny that thing is. I hate shiny stuff. Oh, opponent <laughs> so I was saying, uh, I don't think that J the Death Shadow runs fast lands. It sort of goes against their like beat yourself up strategy. You miss nothing, Ferdy, but welcome. Uh, you miss the opponent like ripping my hand apart. They literally triple triple thoughts used me. Um, this is a great card. Um, I'm gonna play the Sea Chrome Coast. I'm going to adapt, and I'm gonna probably pitch the Island, I guess. So Benthic Biomancer now officially Renin six proof. Don't give me a land, please. Don't give me a land, please. <laughs> that is not a land. That's awesome. Um, so I'm going to pitch the is land, the card that is land. And we are going to attack. And since this is not Death Shadow, this should hopefully be a productive attack. Um, <laughs> yes, I am super clever. There, see? I mean, I know my modern. <laughs> Seal of Fire, uh, which me it probably just means they have Lurus, I guess, in the main deck. What do you got, dude? What I was saying is that Raging Ravine just totally means that this is just Jund, not... not. Okay, Fatal Push. You got me. You killed my one drop. Opponent is on zero cards. Like, <laughs> what is going on? I think that means I'm supposed to get Lurus right now.
And then next turn, if I don't draw a land, uh, I can just like Silver Gill uh, plus like cast Ben from the the graveyard or something. Although that's that's a little sketchy, right? Because they do have they have Seal of Fire down. Um, if I cast Luris, they're going to be able to just kill him right away. So maybe I just I just flood them with the fish. Um, not really sure how amazing Mariner is. I, I you typically want to lead with Mariner, just like make them commit a little bit of mana. Maybe it gets us another turn uh, to just like draw land, start developing uh, the board a little bit more. So, yeah, you know what? I'll go with Mariner. They're on zero. If they top deck a Liliana, they won't be able to target uh, the Mariner. I don't believe the opponent knows about any of these cards in hand currently. Yeah, so we're on the same page. It doesn't turn off Lily plus, it turns off Lily minus. So you guys can see this pretty purple or pink diamond that Paintball has because he is a VIP. <laughs> this new power that I have to designate VIPs. Basically, if you give me money, I'll, I'll make you a VIP. <laughs> Or just chat a lot in my in my uh, in my streams. <laughs> that also makes you a very important person. All right, opponent, what are you gonna do with that seal of fire? Crack it right now. Ugh, okay, they read the card. <laughs> Curses. Okay, blood crypt. We don't mind seeing that. Opponent slow rolling on the seal of fire. Fair enough. So land would not be the end of the world here if we were to draw another land, but okay. So we got it. Um, you know, uh, let's see. They're going to hit something. So let's think. They've got a lot of lands. Uh, if I play the Lord now, they might go after the... I don't, I don't know which, which one they would prioritize trying to kill. The best play here might just be to run out Silvergill first. Mm, yeah, let's just run Silvergill out right now. I'll play the Lord and see. They can take their pick. Uh, hey, Odysseus. Welcome to the stream. Come on, no more lands. Okay, this is going pretty well. Uh, so typically the plan is, like, if you've got cards in your hand, just keep playing them. At a certain point, you can just get Luris and cast it. So, opponent, here's the choice. Okay, they've made their choice. It's a good choice. Mariner's a great card. But soon, I'll have two lords on the table. And things like Seal of Fire won't be as useful anymore. So how are you guys all doing this evening? Um, have you been going out more? Uh, is the quarantine affecting you increasingly less and less? Well, that was a good top deck for the opponent. <laughs> Just like draw two cards. Nice paintball. Glad to hear that. That sounds sounds pretty good. I saw your uh, I saw the court of calling a second ago. Look at that beauty. It's too shiny though for me, man. I wish it was not foil. So opponent looked at my top deck, uh, and they've got one more card in hand. Something like spreading seas would be very nice here. Uh, Ben. I mean, I could do, like, Ben plus, um, plus get Luris in hand and just sort of chill a little bit. Or I could just go with the plan of playing out my hand, as I was saying, is kind of the way to go. Just crack in with, um, with Silvergill Adept. That seems okay. Crack in with Silvergill Adept anyway. I kind of would like to wait like a little longer on Luris, so I could attack with the Lord too, but that's just too much blowout potential. Like if they push or bolt this guy, then this guy gets killed. Opponent doesn't seem to have the removal though, which is promising. So against Jund, you typically want to flood the board. They're not really working with like board board wipes. At this point, if we draw land next turn, we can loot with Ben. Opponent uh, tanking at the end of their turn, which is a weird time to tank, since if you were going to remove something, you would have done it during my combat. 
And somehow, even though I'm talking and talking and talking, the opponent is like two minutes behind me. What do you got? Okay, cool. Drew something. Ah, uh, Goif. Okay, that's a big boy right now. So they didn't have that bolt last turn, which makes me think that they just drew that. Um, which also makes me think that they don't have more removal in hand. So I think the turn has come now to put Luris into hand. Um, you can't attack into this Tarmogoyf. Um, well, the opponent did get to draw two cards with the seasoned, uh, the seasoned Pyromancer, so... I mean, I could just play a Lord and, and just, just, uh, just pump Ben uh, by adapting. Like, just wait or something onto the opponent's turn and try to surprise them in some way, so he would become a 4-4. Uh, a um, I could also just start by adapting. But, I mean, if I draw a land, I'm not going to pitch the Lord to play the land to get Lurus. So, I think it just seems fine to get Luris now. If they have a Thought Seize in hand, then good for them. Remember, we do have a Spreading Seas chilling in the graveyard, so if we do get, if we draw a land next turn, we can play Luris uh, and play Spreading Seas. Kind of a combo. Oh god. Okay, well, they've, <laughs> they've only got one green, so they can't really choose... They can't respond to me casting something. Scavenging Ooze always comes at the most obnoxious time. I hate this card. <laughs> I hate it, like, so much. Arr. Yeah, getting in with Tarmogoyf seems correct. What is this last card in the opponent's hand? All right, well, we're not, we're not drawing... <laughs> we're not drawing lands, so... It might be time to just play Lurus and Ben. Um, and then we can maybe even chump and then replay something. Now, opponent can respond to me casting Lurus by exiling Ben, but maybe they think that I'm like slow rolling this here like i'm gonna play a land and then play like a lord but this is my best play here it also leaves up force in case there's some crazy shenanigans on their turn what do you got dude what are you gonna take ah they took ben <laughs> what a jerk this opponent is uh i don't know I think I kind of feel like attacking with the Silvergill Adept. <laughs> if they have removal at this point, then they've played this very well. Yeah, they don't have more removal. All right, so trading with this thing. This thing can make uh, tokens from the graveyard, but they need another land for that. And if they tap out for that, that's sort of okay with me. Do you get to untap and hopefully just play something from the graveyard with Luris? Again, chumps, chumps in this spot are actually fine. Opponent, they could just fire up Raging Ravine they, or just make those tokens I was talking about. Going down to seven is bold. Bold. One card left in hand. Oh, they're just going to start eating stuff, which is whatever. I mean, there's plenty of stuff in there. So I went down to seven, and they're going back up to nine here. Uh, they can't really attack so well, because if I play a lord... 
becomes 333, which would just win. I think the opponent has nothing here. Not no attacks at all. That's awesome. Uh, so here, I think I can just play Silvergill, try to get ahead in cards. I'll actually reveal that I have the trickster. They're going to um, they're going to empty my graveyard out, which is unfortunate. But I can I can start just getting advantage or card advantage with Silvergill. I think. So reveal the trickster, and then um, I could even like upkeep. Go for the scavenging ooze, force them to commit their mana before they before they draw something amazing. Oh, another silver gill is pretty sweet. Uh, might just want to run that out right now. And then next turn, I can cast trickster uh, on my turn. They could also just thought seize me, and that's it's a good card to have in hand. But I do like I like casting the other silver gill. If they draw like a maelstrom pulse. I still have an adapted Ben. Uh, Mute of Alt is quite nice. All right, so we got some value out of Luris. Still no attacks, but this trickster uh, could change that in an instant. Uh, opponent, opponent's flooding out at this point. It's good for me, not amazing for the opponent. I've got more than enough chump blockers here. Hopefully they drew like a Liliana or something I can just... Alright, you got it. What else? What else? Red mana. More red mana. Did they draw another season Pyromancer? Get out of here. <laughs> they know I have the Trickster because I revealed it. So the deck should be over here in Cardboard Live uh, for anybody who wants to check it out. Opponent just refreshes their hand. Maybe they go for push and I can just counter it, but are they going to attack? It would be interesting because they do have the Trickster. All right, so still no attacks. Uh, we have to think about our math at this point. Opponent, uh, well, we have the combo of the like Trickster tapping and bouncing something. If they block with Tarmogoyf, it's just dead uh, with Trickster. Opponent, opponent can currently grow the scoos a little bit bigger, but uh, so let's assume that they're at 11, right? So if I want to get something out of combat, I could leave them with just two blockers. I'm pretty sure they don't have removal. Uh, so tap down whatever, tap down scoos, right? Uh, play a lord. Can't activate Mute Vault if I want to flash in Trickster. So play a lord. Uh, they'll have two blockers. Um, so it block the biggest guys. So it will be uh, four and four, and then they'd be set to take um, three, three, and three, which would be nine. So it's not quite lethal uh, with two blocks. Block, block. The Tarmogoyf would die though. Also, they're forced to they're forced to um, take an unfavorable trade here. Again, this is all sort of assuming if they do try to remove um, one of my creatures, I can just hard cast force. So. Um, I think this seems like a pretty good... Oh, you know what, though? I have to be careful here. Um, huh. I'm getting close to just being able to... Like... I can just pass, leave up Trickster and Force, and if they don't cast anything, I can just adapt Ben and have a better attack next turn. Uh, there's not too many more creatures in the graveyard, uh, and the opponent may not even want to exile this. They might just like spend five mana to recast it. Um, one more time, if I if I just flash in Trickster and a Lord, um, assume they have two blockers. Block, block. I don't know. It doesn't seem great here. Um, I might just play the Lord and pass. But we're getting there. I, I like the spot that I'm in. Since the opponent is playing pretty slowly, I can afford to um, to take my time as well. 
I'm I'm very well aware of the the clock. Okay, opponent untapped without casting any removal again. Uh, pretty brilliant slow roll at this point. If they do, inf it did in fact have removal in hand. Um, so another raging ravine. Let's see what they do here. They do have raging ravine as a blocker at this point. Uh, Ren, I think, is just fine to just straight up just just cast this. It's fine. It's not hurting us too much, but it does it does generate value for them. Possible I could have saved the force. Um, but I'm putting them on pretty much nothing here. I think they top decked the Raging Ravine. No, they might have top decked. I think they top decked uh, Ren and Six. So they probably had a land in hand with Raging Ravine, and they probably have another land in hand at this point. So attacks are actually sort of interesting because if they block and something dies, I can just recast it with Luris. Uh, another Lord. All right, so things heating up here. Uh, they can't They can't activate Raging Ravine right now, so this probably is a good option. Uh, probably a good spot to try to go in. All right, so I'm definitely going to play the Lord this turn. And... <clears throat> the way, I think the opponent's just kind of F6-ing, so... Semi F six thing. So attack with everything except Luris, right? Right now, let's just assume they block three things, right? Block, 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 whatever. Um, they're set to take like uh, eight, I guess. If I don't attack with Luris, um, which is getting there. And I get to recast something from the graveyard. Um, I can trickster and, and just kill their Tarmogoyf. They do know I have the, the trickster. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack. Oh, but they can eat with Scoos too. I need to, um, need to keep that in mind. So why don't I Scoos first? I'll just, uh, or rather, uh, trickster the Scoos and attack with... Maybe I can just attack with everything, right? Um, if they only have two blockers and they don't have removal, then they can block these guys, and then they're taking a lot. So I think that seems fine, right? Attack, 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 attack. I'm going to tap this down. They do block, block, and they're set to take 12 from this. Some, something's going to get eaten, but um, I think it's just time to attack. No, I don't. I, I want to um, turn scavenging ooze off so that it can't eat something that dies. Um, okay, so now if they block and something dies, I get to just recast it. All right. So I think I played that very cautiously um but we had that we had that kind of luxury i think so pretty even on time let's go to the sideboard here relic's going to be pretty good tide binder is going to be pretty good uh, spreading seas going to be pretty good the first play of the game was the opponent took spreading seas out of my hand uh, echoing truth pretty bad I actually take out the forces i think in this matchup <clears throat> So Fruit Kid, uh, the reason that I cast Force, and there was a there was a legitimate reason. It wasn't so much that I was super scared of um, the Renin Six. It's just that if they're going to, um, I'm not really looking to cast Force on my turn, right? Um, I want to use my mana. I either, I either want to cast Lords and recast things from the graveyard. Uh, so I'm looking to cast Force on the opponent's turn. I left Mana up. They cast a Valuable Spell. Um, they're not going to cast Removal on their main phase 90% um, of the time, right? So I had, the, I had the Mana. I had the Spell. They were clearly sort of representing that they didn't have a lot of gas in hand. So um, Yeah, against Jund, I like taking out a couple of vials. I think that that's uh, sort of a classic sideboarding strategy. Um, pretty much all the Merfolk are good in the matchup. 
Uh, some of them die to Ren and Six, but they're still they're still valuable creatures. Um, if since since you trim uh, vials against uh, Jund, I don't take out a land on the draw. And since tempo is typically not like a super winning strategy against against Jund, I guess one of the trims could be Harbinger. Uh, just because this deck has the Muta Vaults in the caverns, and it's really hard to uh, to get double blue sometimes to cast Deprive. And so uh, Monolik is a reasonable choice, um, but I don't really think that Counter Magic is necessarily where we want to be against Jund. Um, these are all like incredible additions um, post board. Took out the forces and uh, two vials and one harbinger. I think this is fine for game two. Um, we can just go ahead and jump in. I hope that explanation from Mono Leak over Deprive makes sense. Um, I think in any mono blue list, uh, Deprive would clearly uh, make the cut above Mono Leak. Uh, uh, this is a little bit awkward, uh, but it is a keep uh, against Jund. They're mulliganing to six. We are on the draw. We've got all 20 lands in the deck. Good point, Dogfish. That's another good point. Deprive uh, sort of um, reverses your mana a little bit. Okay, opponent on the multi six. Looking at my top deck, this feels like a Ren and six opening to me, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, if Ben just gets killed, um, that's just the way things go sometimes. I mean, even if we if they if they have Ren and six, we lose our one drop. That's one of the uh, the massive upsides of Ren and six is is killing these kinds of one toughness creatures. Uh, but if they don't have Ren and Six, I do get to adapt it, even if we don't draw an island next turn. Uh, they're looking at my top deck again. Um, they have another land, and let's see what they have. All right. Maybe Croxa. All right, Engineer is supposed to be on two. That's totally fine. We can fight through that without a problem. We've got two drops for days. Opponent's on three cards. White land would be good here. Opponents drawing up to four cards, though. They'll have five on their next main phase. Um, you know, we're just going to go ahead and, and adapt while the adapting's good. I don't think we need two dismembers. Uh, we've already got some tempo bears here. Uh, Relic is pretty sick, particularly given the disposition of my mana here. Liliana would be a little bit rough, but if they play her in minus, then I get to activate Mutavault and just kill her right away. Yeah, Cavern is a fine choice to sideboard out if you sideboard out a land. But are you saying uh, that you sideboard out a land? You're saying you sideboard out a land in addition to two Ether Vials? To me, that seems uh, a little too greedy. Like, you can see in the situation, like, we, we need to be casting spells. Thoughtseize is fairly low impact at this point. If they've got a Tarmogoyf, they might take the Relic. Um, they could also take the Tidebinder, but given my mana situation, I don't know. Uh, it seems like any, any, almost any card, maybe except Harbinger, would be a reasonable choice. Uh, you side out a land when you're on the draw because um, you get an extra draw step in the game, and so the odds of you hitting your curve uh, are significantly higher than when you're on the play. It's just math. There are... Oh, they took the Dismember. Interesting. They do have the engineered on two, and I don't have. Uh, well, I can I can just uh, get rid of the graveyard. That seems pretty good. But currently, there's no creatures in there. Um, I can attack and see if they want to trade off their scavenging ooze for my benthic biomancer. Their life total is getting pretty low already. Uh, Odysseus, if you Google um, like how many lands should I play? Um, Fra and Frank Karsten, uh, like, so how many lands should I play Frank Karsten? And he, he wrote a really good article. He's a mathematician who works for Channel Fireball, writes some really amazing articles. Um, and he's got a chart that shows the chances of, of um, hitting your curve. Oh, they're trading a scavenging ooze. That's delicious. 
All right, so uh, yeah, now we'll just play Relic and uh, hopefully draw land at some point. Opponent chilling with their Engineered on two. Me not being able to cast any of my twos. And they have a ton of twos in their deck. I guess that's part of the reason they would have wanted to trade is that this is coming sooner or later anyway. Again, still ahead of the opponent on time, even though I'm doing extensive commentary. I will attack with one of these Mutavolts next turn. Opponent thinking very hard about how to spend their mana here. <laughs> Tarmogoyf doesn't really scare me that much. Still going to attack. Let's see how new the opponent is. Start off with a little heads up. Pay attention to this card opponent. I mean, this colorless mana is doing kind of nothing for me, apart from attacking. What do you got, dude? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that went that went sort of well for us. But again, the opponent may, maybe they don't care too much. They're just trying to sort of get to bloodbraid mana or something. Okie dokie. Well, uh I don't know. I guess that semi sort of explains that weird block with the Tarmogoyf. Um uh, spreading Seas taking them off their only mana might just force them to crack this Engineered Explosives. Uh, <laughs> could also just attack into Lurus for two points. They're certainly not going to block. Um, I'll, t I'll, take, I'll take the green mana. I would love to draw blue land here. All right. So, <laughs> super duper weird game. I could very easily lose this still. Even, even though the opponent's been doing all of nothing and just throwing away their cards. Looks like they might be a little bit stumped. If they had the green mana, they would just slam it, I think. So you crack Engineered Explosives, right? Oh, you play on zero? What? 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 Next level plays. Yeah. I guess they get to replay engineered explosives. I don't know. <laughs> what? Why? Why? Oh man, I hate lifelink so much. Just give me like a blue land, please, for once. Uh, okay, so I'm going to attack. Are they going to spend a removal spell on my Mutavault? Sort of fine. Man, Lurus would be so... I mean, Harbinger would just be so good in that spot. Drawing all of our mutavolts, all three. Every other deck in our, every other deck in our land, <laughs> every other land in our deck makes makes mana that we can use here. Inquisition. All right. Behold, behold the glory that is my hand, opponent. Take take whatever you want. I don't care. Good choice. Very good choice. So is he going to attack with the Harbinger Chilling here? Looks like it. 
So blue land off the top, please. Oh my god, this is so ridiculous. Um, I think looting here is better than just playing out another Ben because it could just give me a um, the island that I need. And it also makes me be able to trade with Luris. That's something that I want to do. Oppon opponent in the tank as to how to respond to my adapt. There we go. Yes, okay. So, um, it, honestly, I think the lords are kind of the least important here. Um, but maybe this Ben is the least important. No, I could play another Ben, so I'll keep the Ben. Uh, I've got, I've got like, five more lords in the deck. I like all of my tempo bears. Um, so I'm a bottom of lord. I'll play that. I'm gonna play that, and look out opponent. Somebody has two islands now. They can play engineered explosives on one and crack it, which is rough. But it takes their whole turn, and I can still block and kill Benthic Biomancer, uh, block and kill Luris with one of my trusty Mutavaults. I don't know. I don't know about that play opponent. Unless, like the bolt, bolt or seal of removal for Benthic Biomancer. Do I double block the Tarmogoyf? Do I risk that? I don't really think so. Uh, Trickster is kind of cool. Trickster might just eat their Goyf next turn. But then they just they just sack the engineer explosives and whatever. Um, I think I just attack with the bends. Maybe attack with one of the mutavaults. Uh, it could be. It could be. But at the same time, the opponent's clock is is running down. So. Okay, taking it. And I think that's enough for now. This is only game two, and the opponent is <laughs> sort of threatening to time out already in this game. Trickster stops EE from coming back for a turn. Because they have to crack it, right? I could have I could have I could have uh, like upkeeped on Luris, but I guess we'll see how this goes. So this is weird. I mean, I mean, why why would you play a lord into engineered explosives? It, I don't it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. So I mean, the play here for me is just what um, tap down Luris, I guess. <laughs> Obviously, I would love to uh, to get the Tarmogoyf, but I don't think that that's on the cards for this turn. I didn't even see what they took. What did they take? Another lord. All right, opponent, getting close to six minutes on the clock. Okay, another thing that dies to engineered explosives on two. 
and they can't crack engineered explosives right now. So <laughs> just bounce Luris on my turn. Man, I don't know, opponent. I'll take it. Another trickster, huh? Interesting. You just tap this thing down and swing for five plus two, seven. Not enough. Um, so I think I'm just going to maybe like upkeep the lures again. Tidebinder to tap this thing down. I'm so limited on my blue mana, so I think I'm just going to upkeep tap the Luris. That would that leaves me with a bunch of power on board. The opponent can attack if I get if, if so I, I would have um so six, seven plus two of these guys. Um eleven. Not quite enough. But I think the plan I might just bounce Luris. Seems fine to me. Cards that the opponent knows about. All right, so attacking doesn't really get me very far here. Um, so I'm just gonna pass. There's still like a two plus minute time difference. Not sure the opponent is playing this optimally, but it's super awkward with the engineered uh, and and the two Tarmogoyfs. <laughs> okay, you got it. What else? Croxa. Okay, well that's gonna start damaging me. Um, so I've got redundant tide binders, so whatever. Opponent down to five minutes. I don't think they're going to get a game three like finished in, in enough time. That this opponent is pretty slow. Okay. So one unknown card, the trickster in my hand. Opponent, pretty far from being able to um, escape Croxa. I like that. That just sort of drags out the game a little bit more. Um, they need uh, black, black, red, red for this. Um, takes them off one of their red if I hit Raging Ravine. It also uh, it leaves up uh, Adapt out of Ben. Opponent can play Lurus. If they draw another land, they can start Croxa-ing again. Um, Ether Vial is a card that I will play now. It's something that I could pitch to like Croxa, but um, this game might just go on and on and on and on. And this is just a way to actually get creatures on the board. So I don't know, whatever. I could have hit Black to stop Luris. That is a good call, but. Raging Ravine is also a thing. Oh, now they're going to escape Croxa right away. That makes sense. But I do have Trickster to tap down Croxa. So they're also emptying their graveyard. Um, so I don't know. This I don't even know if we're going to get to game three at this rate. Kaioma, um, this, is, this is a new league. Um, the opponent's rather slow. Um, they just blew up an engineered explosives, killing two of my tempo bears and two two tarmogoyfs. Uh, they seem intent on casting this Croxa. Um, so I'm going to pitch the trickster, and I'll I'll just uh, tide bind the Croxa, I guess. Because it is a red creature. 
sort of a free attack too now. Oh wait, 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 wait. I want to uh, adapt Ben. Um, land, I guess, would be the best just to get it off the top of the deck. Also, I mean, land is kind of good here, though. <laughs> so we are losing the land, whatever. Um, maybe there's another land. Let's see. I mean, the clock can be so brutal sometimes. I mean, Fruit Kid, I'm just I'm just playing the game at this point. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to make the opponent time out. They're just kind of doing it on their own. Okay, well, you know, things didn't look amazing for a little while, but they don't look too bad right now, I guess. Removal for the Tide Binder. Uh, I, th I have a feeling the opponent probably thinks it will untap the Croxa right away, but that's not how it works. They do have a Lurus in hand, which is kind of annoying, so a Trickster would be very good off the top. Annoying because it's lifelink. Um... This is so funny, like, what is opponent doing? Maybe trying to get Chalice. Blow up my Chalice of the Void. Okay. That resolves. This happens most often in, like, uh, round one. You get, like, opponents that are on the newer side. Not always. Sometimes you get paired against, um, like, crazy strong opponents. So if I just activate both of these guys, attack, they block, they go to 10, and they take 8. Uh, somewhat unfortunate. <laughs> um, if this was an untapped land and I played it right now, uh, I could just attack for lethal. Uh, but they could also just have... Um, removal in hand. So... I don't know. I guess, I guess it seems like a decent time to attack. Um. <laughs> okay. okay. Trading your bomb three drop for my one drop. Okie dokie. Well, thanks to everybody uh, for joining me this evening. I definitely appreciate uh, the company. It's always fun playing with, with you guys around. And the Murpho crew is just uh, always so vocal with the, with, the, with the input about like potential lines that I can take. It's, it's awesome. Opponent, you do not have the, the time to sit and think about all these plays. You just simply do not have that, the, the luxury. Kayoma, I just kind of want to sit on Relic. Um, okay, you got it. Termination. Hey, Lonely Isotope. Thanks for joining me this evening. Uh, this is the very first round, uh, you know, surprisingly. It's just this Jund opponent is super crazy, 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 crazy slow. And they probably should have won the game, but I don't think they really sort of understood how to navigate this weird board state between uh, the Engineered Explosives and the Luris and the Recursion and the, I don't know. It wouldn't have forced the Lurus to trade. Uh, it wasn't lethal. I did the math last turn because Tidebinder wasn't attacking. Okay, no attacks. So at this point, cracking the, uh, the Relic just seems fine. And that's extra fine. Not, not so good. 
But I'm going to win on the clock. It's kind of dumb. All right. So a little pocket of nonsense there. Um, just pass the turn. Maybe the opponent will waste waste a moment just like inquisitioning me or something. Oh, yeah. I might have been able to attack. No, they have lifelink. I don't think I had lethal there. Oh, you know what? I think you're right, because they go up to six, and then they take six. Yeah, no, I had lethal, but it's I'm just uh, not, not, trying to, not trying to attack for lethal here. Yes. Yeah, you're completely right. No, just look at the, how they line up, right? So three blocks, three creatures getting through, six damage, and they gain three, so they go to six. Um, whatever, I guess. So, sorry that this has not been the most entertaining match. Uh, I did miss lethal last turn, which is kind of lame. Should still play tight, even when things are obviously pretty good for you. Um, I'm, I'm going to Harbinger uh, the Croxa when it attacks. If the opponent gets to attacks, which it doesn't look like that is going to happen. So, all right. 1-0 and oh in the league. Um, hopefully the next round will be... Uh, better. <laughs> uh, opponent saying good game. Good game. Thank you. That's, that's really cool to see the opponent actually give me the GG. Um, they played it to the end. I'm sure they did their best. And I, I responded, good game. Thank you. So really nice to see the sportsmanship. On the rare side, I would say. So, um, oh yeah, I can just go get Lurus too. My head is not in the game. Let me, let me uh, take a break. I'll come back and hopefully uh, put my thinking cap on. So that match was so long, I, I drank this entire thing of water <laughs> during that match. Actually, I have like half a glass left, so not the entire thing. I'm going to fill All right, so uh, I'm gonna check the opponent, but I'm gonna I'm doubting that they have any trophies. Yeah, so not yet, but definitely a good sportsman. Give me the GGs. Um, that's really really important, and I love to see it. It's it's so cool. Uh, so uh, I'll say sort of in the, in between uh, rounds here that well, first of all, when when games sort of go to time. It makes it so that I probably can't finish the league in one evening. I'll, I'll do my best. Hopefully we get some fast matches. I want to say welcome to everybody who's joining me. Um, it means a lot having you guys here with me. Um, sometimes I miss lines, so it's also helpful that you guys are here to like tell me when I'm about to make a mistake. Um, 
I think I have about 191 followers. I've been really pushing to get to that 200 number. Uh, it's kind of significant because I think once you get around 200 followers, uh, it, you've got a little bit more um, cachet, I guess. Like, so if I want to get a sponsorship at some point, you know, talk to different um, companies, I guess, different channels about possibly getting uh, picked up, then have, having over 200 followers means a lot. So um, if you guys are not following currently, I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you want to support the channel even more than that, uh, you can subscribe, which is amazing. Throws a little bit of money my way. And you can even do it for free if you have Amazon Prime. Uh, you can Google like how to link your Amazon Prime with your Twitch Prime uh, or your Twitch account. It will become Twitch Prime when it's linked. And then it, 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 it all takes like two minutes. So if, if that's something you guys are interested in, um, go ahead and Google that. Uh, but even just giving me a follow is, is incredible. Wow, instantaneously found an opponent. I'm already a celebrity, Ferdy. Do not front. All right, so. <laughs> this would be a great hand if it had ether vial in it. Opponent's keeping seven, we're mulliganing. And, oh my god, on a mulligan to six, this is a keep. Um, it is just sketch-tastic. It's less sketch tastic because we have the two silver gills, which just require one blue mana. Uh, so this could be like a combo deck or Tron, which makes me lean towards keeping force, even though it's 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 even more card disadvantage. Um, obviously, uh, one of the two uh, double blue creatures could be an option. Um, I'm sort of inclined to keep the sort of busted counter spell. What, what do you guys think? What do you bottom here? Or do you even keep this? I mean, it's sketchy, but it's it, it, for me, it's a keep. I'll wait, you guys. <laughs> we have a vote. We have a vote for Trickster. We have two votes for Trickster. I can see that. I do think that Force is rather powerful if it's like Tron or something. Um... Yeah, all right, so cool. Fish teamwork. We're going to keep it. We're going to put the wonderful Merfolk Trickster to the bottom of the deck. We're going to hope that we do not get Inquisitioned. Actually, I can just counter Inquis... Oh, what are we playing against here? Trickster might actually have been the nuts if this is Prowess, but they didn't play anything, so it makes me think it's Storm, in which case Force and that Dismember, which I can cast with Mutavault, are both quite good. So we'll have to wait and see what we're playing against. Looks like, well, Opt is probably Storm. Opt could be, uh, could be Prowess. I think they play Ops in some number. Uh, they went top. Uh, so opponent untaps. They did top, so that probably means they have a second land to play, right? And there it is. Look at this crazy mountain. That's beautiful. Okay, well, uh, the way this works is we just dismember this sort of instantaneously. Because if they have, like, two spells plus mutagenic growth, this thing will just grow and sort of counter the dismember. So I really, I don't even want to play into the possibility that they... See, like, here's a mutagenic growth, I'm sure. There it is. Uh, yeah, Kaioma. It, no, I mean, it's, it's almost the, the most likely uh, thing when you see this land at this point is Prowess. It's like the second deck in the format, second most popular. So uh, this is going to resolve. I'm not, there's no need to counter this. It'd be cool if they had, like, I don't know, another one or something. Okay. So I'm getting hit for four, and then I'm going to dismember, which is going to hit me for four again. So starting off... Um, Getting hit pretty hard. But that's actually really sick. Um, as I said, um, yeah, Kaioma, excellent point about excellent point about uh, spectacle. That's like next level to actually acknowledge that. Okay, so we didn't draw land, uh, but we did draw a very good card in the matchup. We still have a force uh, that can counter uh, like a light up the stage. 
Okay. Still above 10 life. Land. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we're slowing them down significantly. Let's see if they can go, like, all in on this Soulscar Mage here. I mean, we can potentially counter something. Uh, do I take one and then bounce it on the end step? Or do I bounce it now and let them replay it right now? They have pass priority, so if I pass priority back, it's, I'm just going to take one. I think taking one is kind of the play here, right? And then, then I bounce it on their end step, and it has summoning sickness. Like, would I pay one life to have them lose a turn of attacking with this thing? And I think the answer is yes. I see, I see you guys are on the same page, so... Nice. Uh, I am going to counter this light up the stage. Um, we've got excess cards. So now, I mean... I guess leading with Harbinger is fine. It plays around uh, gut shot and such. I mean, I could do Lord now, and then all the subsequent creatures are going to be bigger. Um, and so Silvergill won't just die naturally, and we can do Harbinger like on the, on the next turn when the guy attacks. So I think maybe Lord is actually better. I see, I see Isotope is, is on, that, on that plan. Now we, uh, but if we draw land here, it'd be excellent just to be able to start casting these things. Okay, that's so good. It took long enough, but it's quite good. Are they going to respond before I draw? I will attack here. Another land, uh, sort of okay-ish. I mean, it gets us at least to the point where we could put uh, Luris into hand. I revealed the Silvergill Adept. I don't want to really show my the, the trick that I have in my hand. So we, they know that I have a Silvergill at this point. Starting to equalize on damage somewhat. And you know what? I can actually, at this point, I can throw a block in front of the Soulscar Mage to sort of incentivize them uh, to, to buff it a bunch, and then I can bounce it. So I, th I think that's probably the best line. As long as they don't just like try to take the gill out right now, and then there's no blocks, but that's fine as well, so... I'm gonna and I'm gonna like think and think about it. Like, should I block? Should I not block? Should I block? Should I not block? Should I block? And then I block. And I think about it. And then I block. Okay. No, I I, I know that I'm blocking. I I don't. Maybe I'm not being clear. Okay, you know, if that was going to happen at some point, that's fine. Opponent probably content just to sort of leave things how they stand in combat. Okay. So, um, this is where we have to start thinking about ticking Aether Vial up. Uh, I probably don't want to do... I'm not going to do it this turn because I've got the Silver Gill in hand. Um, and then I can put Lurus into hand um, 
with the three mana. And then tick Etheril up the following turn. Currently just have a Lord chilling in the graveyard. Uh, Seas can prevent a redraw. Um, I could, you know, I kind of like the, the, the saucy kind of attack into this thing because it, it sh kind of looks like I have a Lord in hand. If they have, like, another mutagenic growth, then I'm just getting wrecked. I love it. Next level. <laughs> so... Not too much to think about. Um, really, just reveal uh, Silvergill Adept. Yeah, that was a nice moment. That was a really nice moment. Reveal Silvergill. No Lava Darts yet. I might start with Seize, uh, and that, might, that would just affect what I violin, you know? All right, uh, you know they can they can definitely just sort of one shot me here. Um, you know I could have uh, maybe that was poor. I could have vialed in the silver gill and potentially drawn another dismember. We do not have lethal unless uh, well I get Luris in hand. Vial him in now. Nah, we 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 don't. I guess uh, I I sort of um. Forgot about the Lurus plan for a second, but I think my, the line was sort of okay. I like keeping them off cards. Are they gonna... Okay, Soulscar Mage is fine. I think we knew that they had that guy. Actually, I know that we knew that, that they had that guy. Yeah, Lord is lethal if we draw it, right? I'm just saying what we have on board right now. But we can't, we can't cast this Lord next turn. Uh... Because we can't get Luris, vial him in, and then cast something next turn. So opponent potentially just getting in for three here, um, which is decent. Lord does just win, which is quite nice. They did not have Island Walk um, prior to... Uh, I don't think they played a land this turn. These, these matches are always so interesting. Uh, like, just tightrope walking. We are going to get two draws, like Silvergill plus draw step. Huh. Yeah, this is tricky, huh? So I can violin then. Let's see. We're going to say yes. Uh, yeah, so this is right. If I draw the Lord, we do need to vial it in uh, to win. If I vial in, wait, what? <laughs> Can you stack vials so that you put in Ben and then decide when you loot whether to tick up vial or not? Um, well, let's see. We're going to say yes to this. But if I... Hmm. <laughs> if I loot right now, <laughs> it doesn't help me. It doesn't help because I have no cards in hand. I like I like leaving it on two for now because we've got a lot of good cards we can draw. We can draw tricksters. Um, obviously, Lord just wins. I think having Biomancer as a blocker is good enough. Let's see how it goes. Oh man, well that's that's kind of interesting at least. Kind of interesting. So we've got we've got uh, two creatures with Vile. Um, they need to. I th oh, I see a mosquito. I want to kill that thing, but it's. Hold on a second, guys. I hate mosquitoes, man. <laughs> 
So I think the play here is, um, oh, they've got the two flyers. That's pretty rough. Maybe just violin Ben now, right? And and uh, loot. But the thing is, if I loot, then we still don't. Oh, we do have lethal. If we draw a lord, we don't need the muta vault. Um, all right. So I'm gonna loot now. Mosquitoes are the bane of my existence. Um, not really sure it matters how I tap here. Come on, deck. Hook it up. Seven, seven live draws here. Actually, more. Like, let's get a Trickster or Harbinger or Lord. So many good options. Oh, well, that's pretty terrible. Um, I actually sideboard all of that out. So, uh, you, you typically want to have Mariner on the board um, so when you have priority, or put them onto the board when you have priority so that they... Man, I thought I got that guy. I hope this is entertaining for you guys. I'm trying to kill this mosquito. I'm pretty sure I'm dead here, because like any, any bolt or whatever... Uh, puts me at five, and then I just die in the sky. So even even like one takes me uh, like a um, a gut shot would put me to seven, and then it's yeah I think I'm just dead. Well, Monomorphos, not quite getting there yet, but doesn't look good, guys. You got yeah I mean it's all about that thought process, right? So we are effectively at two right now. So unless the opponent, if the opponent has like just three lands in hand, man, we had so many good draws there. We had tricksters, harbingers, and lords. I think that's something like fifteen or sixteen. Well, it's like seven lords plus three harbingers plus four tricksters. Seven plus seven, fourteen. Fourteen beautiful draws there. Slightly awkward because we could almost get Luris, Violem in, and then just and cast the lord. From the graveyard, opponent, did they just crack a fetch? Like, what do they need four mana for? Like, this is so overkill. Oh, they can pay for my stuff, but... <laughs> it's, it's really overkill, because you just need to cast spells, right? So we'll just, we'll just let this kind of run down. Actually, you know what, guys? I'm not going to waste anybody's time. Uh, opponent's got me. They've got me uh, with flyers, so I'll just scoop. Ah... <sighs> Close, 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 close. I'm gonna draw the top card of the deck. You guys call it now. Lord or no Lord? What is it, like rip it or don't rip it or whatever that thing is called. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, two lands. The deck, the deck was not helping me out there. Okay, so we do have some nice tech against this, this deck. We're gonna tech the deck tech. Um, <laughs> uh, forces come out C's come out and it's pretty next level for them to like not fetch blue to keep us off island walk I think, I think the bounce is fine uh, monolith counters their creatures so it could be good um, relic is not good enough and it also is a nombo with chalice of the void where's this mosquito though it's like biting the back of my head when I'm not looking. Dismember does stay in against uh, Prowess. So we've got a sideboard out four cards now. Uh, I could see taking out the Bends because they are, uh, again, a little bit of a non-bow. And they die so easily to, um, like, Lava Dart for no value. So I'll take out three Bends. And maybe one Silvergill adept. The reason, and I, I don't, I'm in, I'm in Brooklyn. There's not that many mosquitoes. I've got, I've got screens in my windows. 
Um, and I see, I see a mosquito like once every two weeks or something. Um, yeah, right. So um, I, th I think this is fine. You guys have any suggestions? We've got like, you know, another 30 seconds or something. I, th I think this setup is fine. Silver Gill is not a bad card. It just dies too easily. You like Ben over Gill? I mean, I guess adapting makes it better, but we tend to have our vials on two. Silver Gill is better for that. Um, all right. Well, I'm I'm always open to learning and uh, seeing seeing what works. So. My instinct was to keep three silver gills, but we can keep three bends instead. Um, I definitely see the rationale. Uh, so with the last 10 seconds, I'll just say again to you guys, thanks so much for joining me this evening. Um, we're currently 1-0 and in a league, uh, down a game to a blue-red prowess. It was a very interesting game. We just got a little bit backed up on our mana situation. We, we got an ether vial like way late in the game. This is a keep. So again, if you guys like Merfolk, if you like Soul Herder, I stream regularly on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, give me a follow. You'll get like a ping or something whenever I start a stream. So we'll get Ben down on turn one. He'll get to um, potentially show his strength. If the opponent plays a, um, a one-drop creature, I'll probably just run out Tidebinder next turn. We don't have any like tricksters that we could hold up alongside Monoleak. We could hold up Adapt and Monoleak. That might be a nice line as well. Um, but yeah, this is a clear situation to just jam Tidebinder, I think. White Mana is not terrible, particularly since we don't have Aether Vial. So hopefully this is like their only creature and <laughs> we're just going to lock it down. But if it's our only creature, then they have like four bolts or something and they can very easily kill the Tidebinder. Uh, the strength of Tidebinder is that if you play it when the opponent's tapped out, you know, they're, they're going to untap without their creature. They lose a turn no matter what. So this is, a, this is not a blocking situation here. So now they're probably going to bolt the Tidebinder and uh, the Swift Spear will get buffed. We'll lose our Tidebinder. They'll untap with Soul Scar. Um, so pretty rough, but um, Tidebinder at least being a bit of a um, <laughs> lightning rod. Aha. Uh -huh. um, taking some damages away from our face. Uh, Dogfish, if you're here, um, oh, that was actually a pretty good draw. That means we can, um, kill one of their things while still playing out spells. We don't have a second white yet, and we don't have Vile, so Luris is, um, pretty far, pretty far away at this point. Sorry about that loud noise there. Um, I think that playing, um, and everything's making noise. My phone is making noise. My computer's making noise. I think I just play Mutavault and Lord and Attack. Right, because we're we're not we're not just chump blocking their stupid creatures, right? So, so much hate. Like, why are their creatures stupid? Just because I say so. Um I guess the question is now, uh do we wait on the dismember or do we uh I I have to I have to do something quick because um I don't want to let them Oh yeah, I want to I want to do it now so that they can't just automatically trigger light up the stage off of my own life loss. Okay, I mean once again not a blocking situation. Uh next turn we'll be able to attack with Mutavault and hold up Monoleek. And we'll see if Monoleek is actually good. I'm sure Light if the stage is coming here. Oh, play Soul Scar Mage, another Soul Scar Mage, and what? 
passing. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So now I'm not attacking. Um, I'm going to tap down their Soul Scar. And I'm going to get in with the, uh, the, the dudes here. Oh, I guess that's a little bit delayed, Dogfish telling me to, uh, to kill the Soul Scar. But yes, we agree on that. Okay, so we punch in for four, and we're sort of racing prowess. They're thinking about using one of their spells on one of my dudes. Um, and, you know, not getting uh, meaningful prowess triggers from this spell. Uh, it's something that I am happy to mono leak. Appar opponent apparently thinks it's it's very important that they kill this lord. Um, I say nay, and uh, empty handed. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, one little tap, one little tap. So stupid. <laughs> All right, opponent didn't attack. Oh my god, how ridiculous. That, hap that happens like, oh, op opponent just scooped, thank god. <laughs> so passing through a combat step like that happens like once every two months or something like that. It's just something that happens. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Like, I am no noob uh, when it comes to the Magic Online interface. <laughs> yeah, opponent was like, oh my god! Like, this guy is next level, not attacking for free damage after, after protecting the, <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> oh my god, that was ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so let's catch our breath. Monoleak was pretty good. I can dig it. They had no blue mana that game, so it's possible they were like entity, entity, entity in their hand. Uh, or just like, op just blue cards, right? Like opt, entity, opt or something. Um, so yeah, we, we, we got away with one there, guys, um, on many levels. We haven't really gotten an opening hand with Aether Vial, I don't think, yet so far, so... Or no, 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 maybe we did, but we had like just Muta Vaults, right? So we were super slow in the opening. I can't remember if that was this game or not. Or this, um... <laughs> yeah, next level. That was almost as next level as like my attack with the 2-2s two into uh, their 3-3. Three three. That's like such like a, it makes you feel so good. You guys remember that attack into the entity? That was, that's like my favorite. All right, so two lands, some white mana, an ether vial, and then some merfolk. Let's go. Jesus. Um, ah, opponent starting with seven. A lot of times Chalice just wins the game, but I, I can't keep one land with no vial, uh, so I got a mulligan. I'm definitely going to ship it, but I'm going to whine about it a little bit first. A hey, a. Hey. <laughs> Once again with the awkward muta vaults. You know, Dogfish, I know this is your list. I know people are kicking butt with it, but I might trim one of these muta vaults. Uh, I'm going to keep... And knowing what I'm playing at this point... Remember, we, it was, we did have muta uh, vile against them, and we bottomed a trickster, which I think, you know, in hindsight, knowing what we're playing against just has to be incorrect. Like, keep the tempo bears, right? So, ship the lord and say, Done. Best draw off the top is Island right now. We've got a lot of Islands in the deck. Something like 8 and then, you know, just blue mana. I think it's like 17. 17, 17 good top decks. It's like um, a third or something. So third odds to hit our mana, but we got two draws to get there. Even not going to be playing these two drops for a little while. Oh my god. All right. Well, <laughs> let's see how it goes. 
Harbinger is the sick combo with Chalice. No more creatures, just throw some damage my way right now. Not Monomorphos, okay. Ah, uh, I mean, this is sort of okay. Really, 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 really want an island off the top. Not an island, just a blue source deck. Don't think I'm being too picky. I, uh, I should have like bluffed some stuff here, but they're just passing priority, so it's all good. Uh, light up the stage. Fucking hate that card. This Yeah, the play is Chalice. Because we're going to see two one-drops off of this, and we're just going to sort of cancel them out right away. <laughs> two two-drops. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I, think the, I think that light up the stage just lost us the game, everybody. I mean, we've got to do what we've got to do. They're just going to cast the Abrade, hopefully not play a land, and then we'll get to play another Chalice. You know, kudos to the opponent for sideboarding in the right tech. No lands. Ugh. Maybe they don't play the Sprite Dragon. I mean, maybe they don't play the Abrade. Let's see. All right, a braid. This is going to happen, right? So now that gets blown up. We take at least four damage, probably more. Um, at least they don't get this Sprite Dragon, which is kind of nice, right? Yeah, the draw is super hard. And we, we had two games now where we're getting wrecked by these Mutavolts. Just positively wrecked. All right, send that, send that Lava Dart my way, opponent. I know it's in there. I know it's in there. You're like, ah, but my triggers. Oh, yeah. I guess if they have Lava Dart, it does more damage. More damage on their turn. Even if it gets countered, right? Yeah. Double Chalice. What a busted draw. <laughs> Meanwhile, the opponent apparently has four manas worth of spells in hand. Nice, nice. It's a good start. It's a great card. Actually, one of the cards that I wouldn't hate getting banned from Modern. Ah! <laughs> nice. Got more of those guys? Lava Dart. Called it. Called it. They've got one card in hand. Another Lava Dart. Why not, right? Just get, get while the getting's good. If we draw a land... We might be in this, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, give me a good land. Not, oh yes. Oh, very yes. So uh, I think we're just bouncing this Swift Spear, right? And then uh, we need to claw our way back into this game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Somebody is ringing some ridiculous bell outside. <laughs> Peace. Draw that a braid right off the top opponent. Or maybe you have it in hand already and you're being super sneaky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Love it. <laughs> oh, this is such a trolley card. Jumping. Chump time. Guy's like, dude, I've got lava dart in the graveyard. Opponent, I am well aware of your lava dart. So, dart the face. Dart the face for zero damage. Love it. And we're going to bounce this Swift Spear, and we've managed to claw our way back into this game. Double Chalice. Busted. Look at this. So I think we know that the last card in their hand is a Swift Spear, right? Because we bounced one of them already. What are they doing? Oh, they're just cracking their fetch land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
they don't have any haste. I guess they have. Well, I can't cast the the hasty creature they could draw would be uh, the sprite dragon. So um, I think I have to attack here. Oh man, guys! If we win this game, that would be massive, huh? Opponent in the tank. I think I killed the mosquito, but those things are bastards. Oh, shit, shit, stop, stop. Okay, oh my god. Like, oh my god. Magic lagged for a second, so I hit like F4 twice, and... Alright, so I guess all that did there was just... It missed an attack with Mutavault, which is pretty stupid. Um, so again, uh, Trickster doesn't... I don't think it matters too much here. Um, yes. Missing attacks. Um, could, could do me in. We know they have two Swift Spears in hand. So they should be at nine right now. Uh, I don't... <laughs> That was that was not my fault. That was magic lagging, and I just hit like hit the okay, let's go, and and it just like passed to to combat right away. But it's, it's still, it's pretty ridiculous. All right, so hmm, lords for days. Uh, that should just be lethal exaxes. Uh, so it's time time to go for it. Opponent is clearly f six, and we have. Snatched a victory from the jaws of defeat. Get there, merfolk. <laughs> Get there. Get there, chalice of the void. Look at this, this hero. Yes. Yes, that is my signature move, I guess, huh? <laughs> Just like messing up. Messing up is my signature move. Yeah, this chalice art is beautiful. Really nice. Really nice. Okay, well, you know, that took a little while. Uh, let's, what, we can play the Rip It or whatever game with uh, lords on the top. So, like, is there a lord on the top? This is, this is my, my trademark now, I guess. No, no lord on the top. <laughs> All right, so... Two wins, zero losses. Looks good. Um, g give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. Too much water. So that Jund match in round one took like almost an hour. So already pretty far into the stream, but only two matches done. So apparently this blue white list is good enough that I can like punt a few times and like still not lose. All right, definitely have enough time to play one more match. Um, maybe more, let's see how it goes. All right. Thanks again for being here with me, guys. Uh, it's nice to have this set time where I force myself to play Merfolk. Like, I get pretty distracted with Soul Herder, um, 
the deck is a lot of fun. I mean, this deck is this deck is a ton of fun too, obviously. But it's just easy to get distracted, you know. Like to have like a set time when I sit down. I've got my homies with me on the on the chat. Okay. Uh, I, this guy looks familiar. Uh, look, name looks very familiar. If you guys want to Google and find out what he or she is on, that would be helpful. Okay, this is keepable. Uh, so opponent's not playing a companion. We're going to keep. Okay. Play this E-Chrome Coast and... Uh, well, we'll see what the opponent's on. Hopefully some kind of creature deck, so Harbinger is, is good, but blue-red, maybe not. It could be Prowess again. I mean, if his name is popular or uh, familiar, could well be on um, Prowess again, in which case I would just dismember right away. All right, I can dig it. It's a good matchup. Uh, a good matchup for Harbinger, I mean, really. Uh, and we just got through it earlier. Now, this is an interesting bit. Oh, never mind. I'm just going to jam that right now. Um, I was going to say it's interesting because our, our normal sequencing is obviously always to lead on Silvergill. But if they have, if you're playing against Prowess and you've got a Silvergill, do you guys lead on a Lord first and then play Silvergill? Hopefully the opponent's on one land. I know these, these uh, super low-to-the-ground decks keep pretty sketchy hands sometimes. So they might have to take turn two off to kill this guy. Which, you know, I'm fine with. Well, they're apparently not taking the turn off. And so, uh, so I'm not going to block, but they can't cast anything with that mana. I mean, you wouldn't... No, no. So we had a choice of playing a two drop So uh, before they had a tapped creature. So we certainly wouldn't have led on Harbinger. Wow. What a, what a beautiful couple of draws the deck is hooking me up with here. We don't know if the opponent is light on lands yet, um, but that's, of course, always the hope when, uh, when you've got the Mariners on the battlefield. Look at this. Look at this. I don't see a third land yet. I'm going to keep taking it. Then I'm going to play a Lord, and I'm going to attack... They could have, like, mutagenic growth or something, which would... Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. So, let's take a second here, guys. Collect ourselves. Think about, think about what the best path forward is here. Um, I mean, Harbinger slows them down. They're obviously uh, light on lands, right? So, to have to redeploy... Uh, means that they're still not going to be able to effectively cast anything. Lord attack um, seems good, but they do have free spells like gut shot and and uh, mutagenic growth. So they don't need to pay for mutagenic growth. Um, I'm not worried about them killing my stuff. I'm worrying about them growing the soul scar mage. Um, But yeah, I mean, sometimes what they do is they'll like lava dart their soul scar mage and then play like mutagenic growth, so they're not targeting our stuff. And then we'll lose one of our mariners. But I guess if they're wasting spells to do that, um, maybe the Lord is the way to go. All right, we'll see how it goes, guys. Um, I'd love to draw a third land at some point, but I'm really not complaining about. Oh, we have Island Walk too, so whatever. We I forgot about Island Walk, guys. <laughs> it's just like. I don't want to say it's been a long day because it's just been a normal day, but, you know, I'm not perfect. <laughs> the point was I was thinking about blocks when they, they obviously couldn't have blocked. All right, while they're taking damage from their lands, they're down to uh they're down to 8 here. All 
All right, upon giving up, that was awesome. So I guess <laughs> we didn't see Mariner in that entire last match, but I, I remember now that it's kind of the nuts against this deck. All right, so is, or do we have a Lord on the top of the deck? Let's see. Nope. One day there's going to be a Lord on the top of the deck. Promise. All right, we'll run back the same plan since it seemed to work pretty well last time. Uh, we trimmed three Silvergill Adepts and four Spreading Seas, or rather three Spreading Seas. Um, did I, I guess I trimmed all, this, all, the, all the Silvergill Adepts. Well, they didn't. Uh, they tapped out, but we didn't. They had mana from Monomorphos, so if they played a Lightning Bolt and paid the two to kill the Lord, it wouldn't have been lethal because I play another Lord and they take six. But still, um, we got out way ahead in that game. So, I think this is the setup. Just basically cut all the Silvergill Adepts, keep the Bends, um, hopefully draw Chalice and Ether Vial and Mariners, and the opponent just. Keeps one land or something? Yeah. That is the strategy. Oh my god. It's happening, guys. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Opponents keeping seven. Uh, they did not see Aether Vial in that game, so possible that they didn't even... Ah, uh, they would bring in a Braid as removal, but if they, if, they, if they go after Aether Vial, then they should just be dead. We've got the Bounce to get their 1-drops back in hand. Oh, man. Opponent's keeping 7, though, so they obviously feel pretty good about it. All right. So they've got the Nuts, they've got the, the hasty turn 1 creature... Island is actually a, kind of an okay draw here. Um, so we're going to play Island, Ether Vial. Oh man, three Swiss Spears. Don't. What do you got? What do you got, opponent? Monomorphos into the bird, right? That's, that's when they snap keep. Oh, gut shotting me. Wow, all right, that's a start. Um, so now, what, light up the stage? Oh, no, 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 no. They get to cast the bird right away. <clears throat> right, okay, cool. So gut shot is like a, an enabler as well for that. So we're going to take a bit of damage here, but Chalice on one, I think we might be able to get through this. I guess we'll have to see. Um... They put one card on the bottom and one card on top. Hopefully that one that they put on top is a one drop because I am going to turn the one drops off right now. Like a faucet. No more one drops. Another island. Interesting. Um, since I'm not playing a merfolk yet, um, it's just like I don't know if I want to play the wander. I guess I'll probably play the wander wine hub. Reveal a lord. It doesn't really give anything away. Um, no, no, I, I totally get it, Flicker Wisp. Uh, but imagine how much more damage I would be taking if all those bolts are resolving and going to my face. Like, I, maybe you just joined me a little bit late, uh, but we just played against Prowess, and we uh, brutalized them in Game 3 with, Ch with uh, Chalice of the Void. Like, they were just running away with the game. We played Chalice, bounced their creatures, and that was that. But they do play a Braid, so we'll have to see how it goes. Well, welcome to the stream. Always happy to see you here. This is round three. I'm currently 2-0, um, and o, up a game against Blue Red Prowess. Opponent um, sending their, their troops in here. Uh, they may get some like free triggers or, whatever, or just like chalice triggers for Prowess. Um, 
but no. Um, all right, so now we have to start dealing with their troops, I think. Um, oh, this is this is quite nice. Um, quite nice indeed. Uh, so I think that at beginning of combat, pretty sure that the line is... Well, we can wait to see what they play. If they play like... Well, Swiss Spears are getting countered at this point. Um, but we can just tide bind, and then maybe I just bounce the Stormwing. Uh, like, kind of unnecessary to bounce a Swiss Spear if we've got the tide binder in hand. Um, so tide bind right now, and then just chill on Harbinger, I guess. Uh, I'm not gonna save it for a creature that's not on the board. If they had a dragon, they would have cast it, right? But I see your point, since I've got the chalice, like why not just harbinger and keep this keep this uh at the ready? Alright. I could see that. I could see that. So we're, the plan then is to echoing truth the stormwing, I guess. And just slow them down, basically. I could also just get in for an attack here and not really mm, nah. lot of options. It's always nice to have options. But this side of my hand, I should probably move it this way. Opponent flooding a little bit, it looks like. Probably have some number of one drops in their hand. So now we are going, whatever, they can, they can attack. Um, nah, I don't think about, I don't like Tidebinder, because I think Harbinger this, Echoing Truth this, they might not even be able to recast this this turn. And then chill on Tidebinder until there's something like more meaningful. Um, yeah. Oh, they didn't even attack with the Silver Gill. Oh, with the uh, with the Monastery Swiss Spear. So I guess they don't have good spells to cast, or they don't really know how prowess works. Um, but if I'm gonna bounce this thing, I'll just keep my spells in hand. Um, If they try, if somehow try to kill my Harbinger, I don't even know what kind of... Uh, okay, so bounce that. Do they have another Monomorphos in hand? They do not. So, um, all right. At this point, it looks like the Tidebinder might be a good call. We can actually... There's nothing in our graveyard, so Lyris is like kind of whatever. Um, Lords are fine. Um, I'm just going to cast a Lord and attack. Opponent didn't attack with Swiss Spear, which is a real sign of weakness. Okay, opponent goes down to 12. What do you got? And I could even Echoing Truth the Chalice of the Void back to hand if they, um, if they go for an Abrade. It's just so good. It's just so good. And they're not, they're not working with too much mana here. So it's not like I think a bounce, they could try this, I could bounce it, and then they suddenly just play out their hand. Like if they draw in a braid right now. Lava dart. Okay, whatever. Uh it's going for my face. Uh, but it's getting countered, so just just pumping up this thing. So now I am going to go ahead and tide bind. It just gets a creature down. Uh okay, that makes sense. Let's see how they scry. Yeah, we've got so much power uh, with this Lord coming. Opponent might just scoop to this Tidebinder, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it's not just lethal on board quite yet. Uh, well, it, yeah, it's 11. It's pretty close. Um, I am going to just Echoing Truth the Stormwing again and for the sick Rubbins. I'm even, uh, all right, let's just play this, play this out here. Ah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be that guy. I 
I am not going to do the aggressive GG, though. I am just playing my cards. It's what my deck does. I don't have to win by, like, an exact margin. I, I, it's okay to go over the top sometimes. Yeah, de definitely knew about the Muta Vault. Wow. So Chalice, Chalice just, just completely crushing this deck. Um, they, have a, they have a decent number of two drops, right? They've got their Sprite Dragon. Um, I'm getting, like, bitten by a bug or something. So, like, um, they've got their Sprite Dragon. They've got that Stormwing Entity. They've got Monomorphos. From the sideboard, they've got a Braid and maybe some other stuff. But Oh, and then Light Up the Stage. Maybe that's, like, their only non-one drops. Uh, but anyhow, um, that one felt pretty good. That one was, like, it was a 2-0, I think, so less close than the previous match. Yeah, yeah, like all of our tempo spells are amazing against Prowess. They, they just like do such an amazing job. Uh, so only one loss so far. Uh, Prowess got ahead of us in one of the games. Uh, I think it was one where we were on the draw, and it was fairly close, I think. Um, I think it was the mulligan to six where I kept Mutavault and Aether Vial and then didn't draw lands for like four turns. Uh, but it was a really interesting close game. Um, yeah, we, we had two weird mulls, I think, uh, but one of them got there. So let's let's check out our opponents and see if they're uh So yeah, this guy's on 8 trophies. So that opponent in the last uh round was totally legit. For those of you who are unaware, my current trophy count uh two two of these came from Soul Herder and uh one of them came from Merfolk. Not this blue white list, but just like a random mono blue list that I threw together. It had four four uh four harbingers, four tricksters, four tidebinders in the main. Uh, for Master of Waves, it was just like the anti-red, anti-meta, uh, mono-blue build. I put it together, started a league, 5 0 immediately. <laughs> it was pretty sick. But uh, haven't played with that list too much uh, since since that league. I, I guess I could probably show you guys that list. I think it's this one. Yeah. So, you know... <laughs> Get wrecked prowess basically. Um, no chalice in the sideboard, but it just kind of felt unnecessary since like we're already slanted. Like Ether Gust is amazing against them, just bouncing their stuff, putting it on top of their deck. Uh, Echoing Truth uh, dismembers fine against them. You saw it came up in both of the matchups, I think, uh, round two and round three. Uh, so yeah, this is the mono blue build. It feels really good. It's a lot of fun. Uh, mono blue gets to play a lot more islands. Uh, it also gets to comfortably play. The full uh, place at a Muta Vault uh, without really any problems with the mana. Um, it also gets to play Deprive, which is an excellent uh, counterspell. So I really like this build. Uh, Blue White has been doing a little bit better uh, overall um, with just like total results. It's a little bit unfortunate that my 5 0 with that uh, Blue List didn't get published. I 5 0'd like probably around 10 times, between 10 and 15, I'd say. Uh, I don't know. I, I just I haven't been keeping track. I, let's say 10 at, with Merfolk. 10 times with Merfolk over seven years that I've been playing it. Maybe like only four or five on MTGO. And none of them have ever gotten published. It's just, it's so sad. But you know what's interesting, actually? Now that I'm, I, like, I always check the, the league dumps to sort of see, like, what decks are, are 5 0 and And when I... um. When I come up against opponents, like, I played Freed Mania. Um, I think I was on Merfolk, and they were on Blue-White Control, or maybe Bant Control, Bant Stoneforge Control, and beat them with Merfolk. I went and, and Googled their name to see their tournament results. This guy or girl has 20 trophies. That's 20 5 O's. And if you look at their uh, Goldfish page, they have, they have, like, four results or something, which means, you know, like, a f only, only a fifth of their... Of their undefeated trophies are actually getting published and that's this is just 20 from this from this season from this league like they could have they could have had 20 in the last one so get going 5-0 is no guarantee that you're just going to get immediately published so if you guys find that interesting <laughs> all right so guys my wife is home now i'd like to go say hello um i'm 3-0 in the league uh if i have time i could jump in tomorrow and and finish it off um more and more of you guys have been tuning in, and it's, it's, it means so much to me. Uh, it's very flattering that you guys uh, enjoy uh, 
um, keeping me company while I play my my Merfolk and my Soul Herder. Uh, if you're not following the channel and you you enjoy it, um, I, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me that follow. I think I got like one or two new followers uh, for this stream, so thanks guys. Um, I'm getting so close to 200. I'm like maybe a handful of follows away from from 200 followers, and so um, if you could help me get closer to that number, it would be awesome. Um, if any of you guys have any questions, uh, now's the time, but I am going to, uh, to check out pretty soon. Um, Mariner, Mariner did an excellent job against Prowess. Like, Dismember is such a, like, maybe counterintuitive card against Prowess. Like, we had this in our opening hand in one of those games just now, and they played a Soulscar Mage, and I just killed it, and... Paying for life for that is like totally worth it, right? Like that that Soul Scar Mage would have come at us for like tons of damage over the course of the game. So Dismember actually quite solid against Prowess. Uh, Mariner excellent. Dismember did a good job. Ben's actually been doing well. We've adapted him plenty of times tonight, I think. Um, I've always kind of liked this card. Uh, it's just I went away from Merfolk for a good nine months developing Soul Herder, and. Uh, when I came back, people, the majority of Merfolk players, the overwhelming majority, were like super low on all the one drops. Uh, like no more curse catchers, no more bends, no more nothing, basically. Um, people were just running like curves that go ether vial two drops, right? Um, but Ben is interesting, right? It is our one drop that can become a 2 2. Uh, dodges, dodges Renin 6, um, dodges gut shot, all that garbage, right? So. It's a pretty good card. I compare, I've compared it in the past. I actually think I made a video about this. If you guys want to check my YouTube page, you can just like search in my YouTube page for um, Benthic Biomancer. Um, I compared it to um, Thraben Inspector, right? And I'm not saying it's the same or better than Thraben Inspector, and I understand the differences between them, uh, but it's a pretty clear comparison, right? They're both one-drops... Uh, that are one well i'm not what is what is thraben inspector's power and toughness i'm a little bit tired is it a one two i can't remember um so benthic biomancer you pay one 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 right thraben inspector pay one one two or whatever it is yeah one two so then you pay two mana you draw a card right benthic biomancer you pay two mana you loot right and many times you have a bad card in your hand you can throw away so it's not the same as drawing the card again not saying it is but comparable right to make up for the downside of looting versus drawing, Benthic Biomancer actually gets more tough, more power, right? So you can compare it to Thraben Inspector on power level, I think. Um, and Thraben Inspector is a card that's seen a lot of play in modern. Of course, Benthic Biomancer is a merfolk, so it gets buffed. So it's like, yeah. In, in this deck, it's obviously just a better Thraben Inspector. Well, if Thraben Inspector were a merfolk, we'd probably play it over Benthic Biomancer, I think. But the comparison is there. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, those three matches. Um, if I can, I'll try to stream the end of the league. Uh, if I don't have uh, the opportunity, I will certainly let you guys know how the next two matches go in the Discord. Um, that's it. Um, I'll see you guys next for sure on Monday at around 8 p.m. Eastern with Soul Herder. Um, I've been doing really well with that deck lately. I think I've played something like 10 or 15 leagues with it, with the current build. And I have gone 5-0 twice, 4-1 twice, and then the rest are all 3-2s except exactly 1-2-3. So the deck is super winning, um, crazy fun, really ridiculous. Um, if you want to take a screenshot, uh, this, is, this is that list. Um, I'll, I'll just actually make it fit on the screen for you guys. Um, and yeah if any of you guys have any questions about merfolk or soul herder i'm available on both discords at any time um just at me and I'm, I'm happy to sort of answer any questions so again i'll try to catch you guys before monday but i'll definitely be back monday and then next wednesday with more merfolk so have a great evening um thanks for joining me and hope that i'll see you soon